There are some signs and symptoms that are really important to start suspecting these infections. And let me tell you first that the most important thing is to suspect them to, in order to, to find them. You know, it's, uh, the level of awareness about this disease is quite poor. So it's important to keep in mind that this infection exists and signs like uh, night sweating, uh, weight loss, like a continuous cough, uh, treatment failure to usual treatments like bronchodilators of short cycles of antibiotics should induce you to, to think of this infection, to test patients uh, for, for non-tuberculous non mycobacteria. So uh, it's really important to try to avoid the usual delay uh, to the moment of diagnosis. Of diagnosis. It's really important because it will surely have an impact on, on patient uh, outcomes. Well, this is a great problem. It's really a major problem. Uh, it is, so to, what it's, to some extent, easy to understand its endurance. It can be poor because general awareness is poor. General knowledge about this infection is poor. And also because, you know, uh, following the guidelines means prescribing long-term antibiotics, different antibiotics at the same time. So it's difficult for physicians to follow guidelines and for patients to tolerate this uh, long treatment, so it's uh, easy to understand, but anyway, it's not a good news, so we surely have to work uh, a lot to start uh, to improve uh, adherence to current guidelines, because it's the only way to improve our patient's life and try to solve many cases as possible of uh, this infection. It's fundamental. We should all need a multidisciplinary approach to these patients and to this infection. It's a complicated infection. So you need, uh, for sure, the help of good microbiologists, a good radiologist to start the treatment, to follow follow up patients. You should all need, or you, it's very likely you might need uh, the help and the support of a nutrition uh, of a physiotherapist. So it is really important to collaborate with this figures in order to uh, increase the possibilities of uh, treatment uh, response. It's a difficult situation and interaction is crucial to help uh, patients uh, uh, to get rid of this infection. It's really complicated and it's important, it's really important to uh, approach this as a, as a team. It's, a work team. it's like a, an orchestra with playing a difficult music and the pulmonologist should lead this um, group, this team, and it's the only way to, to get a good result. Well, unfortunately, we have to recognize a lot of limitations because uh, this treatment usually means at least three drugs for a long period of time. So it implies uh, patients could suffer different side effects, could not tolerate adequately the treatment, so you could uh, face a difficult situation where the, the, dip, the balance between uh, benefits and potential side effects is difficult to, to manage. So uh, ensure patients comply and sometimes becomes difficult. So not an easy stuff. Yeah, we have quite new trials, quite new options. Uh, unfortunately, we, they are not completely implemented in clinical practice. Uh, some good news, or partially good news, because some new drugs like pedaculin that were very promising at the beginning have shown to um, be associated with a reasonable risk of uh, antimicrobial resistance, that means uh, losing the efficacy of this drug. We also have alpha-mycin in combination with pedaculin. So, Quite good news, but I think we need a uh, few steps more to decide to implement the use of these drugs in clinical practice. The, the good news is that we have a lot of interest on this infection, uh, and there are a lot of trials going on. So maybe in a, a, in a short-term future, we are we will be able to, to see new therapeutic options that will, you know, should it help physicians in dealing with these patients. It's a very good question and probably not only one answer is, uh, is, can be uh, given because, you know, we have better doctors, better techniques, so it, probably, it is probably easier to diagnose this infection. We do it better than it was in the past on one side, so we recognize, we diagnose these patients more than we did in the past, but on the other side it is clear there are some factors that uh, uh, 
uh, increase the risk of uh, infection of MTM infections, like having a lot of you know uh, comorbidities and more elderly people, more immunosuppressed patients. All these conditions that facilitate. Um, this kind of infections in the world. And on the other side, we have a worldwide problem with antibiotic abuse that somehow could uh, increase the selection pressure on airways. And when treating patients with uh, monotherapy, antibiotic therapy, we have to keep in mind you could uh, easily select in long term those microorganisms that are resistant to that or uh, not uh, responding to monotherapy like the case of MTM. So many factors should be considered, but it is an issue, worldwide issue. These infections are increasing worldwide and it's important to be aware of it.